All right, guys, today we're gonna do a walkthrough of my new squat rack I've built. Now, Sam kinda has to do whatever we tell him, assembly Sam. He doesn't know this yet, but we're gonna have him calculate the exact weight of everything that's on this squat rack. He's gonna be pumped. Sam! What's up, brother? What's up, man? How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, you do know we're getting ready to film a video. I just have a request for you, and that would be, can you calculate all the weight of the squat rack on your Excel spreadsheet so we can Bruh. tell the viewers. <laughs> I don't even have time in the week to do all that. Yeah, well you got time now. So that'd be great. One of these days I'm gonna take that job with Mason and Brandon. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. And today we are going to do a special walkthrough of a new squat rack I've built. Now we've done a video in the past and I called this squat rack the Coop Squat. One, because it used to have an arch logo that said Coop, but I've since replaced it because I wanted more functionality. Now the other reason is because I basically took a Rhino belt squat and turned it into like a lat pull down station, weighted pull ups, all that sort of stuff but I did myself one better because I decided to connect this to some storage racks, add some additional functionality and make it just like a massive beast. And in fact, it's so big, we wanna find out exactly how much it weighs. So Sam, how is it going on the calculation, sir? Fantastic, Coop. <laughs> Beautiful, okay. This isn't like something you just buy off shelf. It just has a bunch of random companies. Like this is one of the beautiful things of an open source style rack. We've done a video in the past which wasn't super popular with the audience where I talked about basically the benefits potentially of a closed system. This is gonna show you the benefits of an open source system. And this is what the open source system is, is it's a three by three upright with one inch holes, basically spaced two inches on center. And it's got 11 gauge steel and I connected all of them together. But let's start at the main frame and that's this right here. This is the squat rack. And this technically is a, well, let's count it. One post, two post, three post, four post, five post, six post, seven post, eight post, nine post, 10 post, 11 post, 12 post, 13, 14, 15, 16 post rack. This is a 16 post rack, okay? If you really think about it. And the benefit to that is that it's just extremely stable. Like if I move this piece, that over there is moving and all of it has a ton of extra storage and weight on it. So it's just really stable. None of it's bolted to the ground, just very stable. And so the idea was I wanted a place in the middle here that was my squat rack. And so what I did was I took Titan series uprights and Titan series uprights. The reason I use their uprights is because they use the keyhole pattern much like Rogue, except they're quite a bit cheaper than Rogue. And so you can order them also all a cart. I didn't need the color. I was fine with black. And so I already had a few of these posts. And I was like, I'll just add to them. They're hundred inch posts, really tall. Then I went to Rogue and I wanted red cross members for the bottom and the tops and across the way. And so I wanted Rogue's because I wanted to use their basically width, which is 49 inches. Yes, I understand like Sornex and Rep has 47 inches, which I do think is superior for most people. But the reason I wanted Rogue's is because I wanted some of their attachments that only work with a 49 inch width. An example is like their utility seat. Also these things, which I'm working on like a DIY, I don't even want to tell you about it yet. That'll be a future video, but it's some sort of DIY piece I'm working on. So that's why I used their cross members. So this right here allows me to have basically a box right in the middle of the rack. And the reason a box is nice is because I can use any attachment that would work horizontally, also vertically the other way. So I can just do anything I want within this box. And it allows enough space where like I can jump and squat and pull up and all that without feeling like I'm enclosed. Then on the back side, I have the Rogue Rhino Squat. And so I, I wanted the belt squat. This is one I've used often, talked about. It's one of my favorite pieces that Rogue's ever built. And they have a lot of pieces of equipment. Like yesterday, for instance, I'm working towards a one-arm pull-up. And so my coach has me doing a ton of like one-arm lap pull-downs, just like as we're getting into the entry phases of it. And so I used this surplus strength lat pull down attachment that then attaches to the Rogue Rhino and allows me to use the Rogue Rhino for lat pull downs. And then I used it afterwards. I did push ups on these dip horns 
with the weight of the rhino attached to me instead of like putting a plate on my back. There's just so many things you can do with it. Obviously you can belt squat, you can do pull-ups. And the way that I'm doing pull-ups is I took jammer arm handles up top. So then I could do weighted pull-ups. I can also put these higher so I can do weighted dips. The Rogue Rhino, honestly, I think is one of the most underutilized still pieces of equipment in home gyms. There's just so much that can be done with it. I still think Rogue is kind of just like, they've just left it behind. I really like its use and I would recommend it for most people. The other thing I attached here that's a little bit unique on the bottom is this basically bench cross member. And this is something that was actually created by my friend Brandon Campbell. And so he created this and this allows you to attach a bench in the middle. It just so happens that the bolts fit perfectly within pre-drilled holes within the Rogue Rhino. So this allows me to back my bench up, center it automatically so it's just ready to go and also makes it so the bench is just super stable because it just kind of locks in there. So something small, but something I wanted to mention. Now the pull-up bars I went with on this, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it like this, but one was this Rogue socket pull-up bar. This one is the stainless steel with knurled. Honestly, this location isn't the greatest because the Rogue Rhino's here, but I can put my feet out in front or I can lift them up to do pull-ups, but I like the stainless steel version. I like the knurled if I'm doing weighted, things like that, it's, it's fine. I don't use this one a ton. The one I use more often is this RM43 out front. This one is not the greatest pull-up design that's out there. I actually like Prime Fitness better, which I have over here, and that's the only reason I haven't put it up top. But I'm still testing it out. I wanna do a review on it, so I wanna give it the benefit of the doubt, but so far, I really just kinda of like the look. I think its implementation isn't perfect, but that's what I'm currently using for pull-up bars, outside of the jammer arms that are right here. <laughs> now we've talked about kind of the squat rack. It's attached to something else, and those are storage racks. So technically, this is a like six post style rack from here, but I connected it up top, and then on another back post, put another post, so then it could connect over to the storage racks. And so these storage racks hold a lot of weight. How much weight? Let's check in on Sam. Sam, how much weight is this storage rack currently holding, sir? Who are you? What are you doing? Are you on your phone? No. Get back. Who are you texting? Well, it holds a lot of weight, okay? And the storage racks, I had these previously in my old garage gym, but I didn't like that they weren't attached to anything because my kids come out here and literally they jump on top of these. I'm worried they're gonna fall over them, decapitate them, you know, things that concerned parents should actually care about. So I decided I'm not gonna attach this to the wall but I need to attach to something, so I attached it to the squat rack. And the other idea I liked was how Sorenex has their apex racks and they allow their weight to sit out forward facing instead of side facing like off an upright post. So that allows me to use this upright as much as I want on any attachments because there's nothing attaching here that's blocking the way, but I have the weight all situated on the back so I can easily, if I want to, grab a 45 pound plate, put it on the bar, and then place it back here. Not only that, just looks freaking cool. This is a, <laughs> a mix of a lot of different companies, like these weight horns are Rep Fitness. This is a change plate set from Stray Dog Strength. I like it because it allows me to put a two and a half, a five, and a 10, all within this small place here. This is one of Rogue's pegboard systems. It's okay, like you use one attachment and then it takes up kind of the whole space. So probably don't really recommend this to most people, but it allows me to store like, you know, collars and horns and all that kind of stuff too. And then I've just got cross members up top to hold more weight. So the idea was like, how can I maximize the storage on this while attaching to this? And then come over here, this is the storage rack. And this is the handheld dynamic weight storage rack. <laughs> Trademarked. This is kettlebells. These are Indian clubs. These are CMBs from Soren X. So it's just like every type of handheld weight you could have other than dumbbells is over here. So the Indian clubs I've got attached to barbell storage hangers up top with these 70 inch Rogue cross members. It just allows it to have more stability. Also allows me to attach extra attachments. One for storage and also if I want to do pull-ups and you can see the rack is just super stable for pull-ups here or I can use these for pull-ups if I want a thicker neutral grip and just allows it to store there easily. And this whole rack is from Frey Fitness. This is their Savage series rack. 
It's the same type of stuff from Rep Fitness from Rogue. And then what I did was I took Hue, Philips Hue lighting underneath so I can basically change the lighting if we want for videos. It's nice because it allows you to see what's here better, but the real reason I do is mainly just because it looks good in videos. Okay, but there's one side, there's a whole nother side. And this side, we've done reviews on a lot of these products. One particular is the Leco Evo dumbbells. That's what makes up this side. I've got some extra storage up top. Down below, I have a Leco plates. I really like Rogue storage rack where they allow you to basically place these in between toaster rack type hangers. So I didn't want to pay the amount that they had for them. So I just had this shelf and I DIY'd it and I just drilled some holes, bought these from Menards, bent them myself and they do exactly what I want. They separate the plates. And so it was just a cheap way to throw it in there. They hold however much weight I want to put on there and just allow me to separate between the weight easily so I don't have to throw them all back every time I use it. So also adds a lot of weight. Then over here, it's basically a mirrored example of what's over there with some additional attachments. Now there are a few more attachments on here that I haven't talked about. One is I do have the lever arms from Rogue on the front and the back. These are the shorter arms. These are the longer arms. I've had these ones for a long time, ever since they came out. These I actually bought on Facebook Marketplace because I wanted a shorter arm and they don't make the 1.0 version anymore. They make the 2.0 version. They're expensive. I was just like, see if I can get them for cheaper and I found them used. And I really like the shorter arms, but it allows me to use the safety bars to then do like upper body work on this. And then the longer arms allow me to do more dynamic work out front. There's other attachments too, like different J cups from Oak Club or from Ghost Strong. This is basically like, I wanted to build the last squat rack I'd ever want or need. This is definitely not something I'd recommend for most people. It's way too expensive. It took way too long to build. I remember my wife coming out like late at night while I was building it because it was just fun for me. She's like, are you still freaking working on that thing? I'm like, yes, it's a labor of love. Leave me alone. So. This is something I really enjoy putting together, much like car guys would enjoy putting cars together. That's how I view this. So don't take this as a recommendation for you. Just take it as maybe inspiration for you to build something that you're into. All right, Sam, you calculated it. You've gotten your abacus out. You've got it all figured out. Tell us how much it weighs. We're sitting right now at a whopping 10,279 pounds. Dang. Eat it, Coop. Did you, did you get the bolts? You didn't get the bolts? There's gotta be like 70 of them. There probably is 70 of them. Okay, now that you've calculated the bolts, Sam, what's the weight? We're sitting at 10,461 pounds. <laughs> that is ridiculous. 10,461 pounds of gym equipment just on a rack. Do you think that's the world's heaviest squat rack? This is something to be really proud of, you know? It is. This is Coop. And Sam. From Garage and Reviews. We'll see you next time. Oh,